Thank you so much. I'm glad to see the full house, so let's do something together. Let's forget about your age and this very moment, and let's go back to our childhood once again. So follow my instructions, close your eyes, don't cheat, I see you, all of you, okay? Close your eyes, and let's go back to our childhood. I promise this will not be a collective psychotherapy. <laughs> or it might be at the end, we'll find out. All right, so listen to my instructions. Try to remember your favorite playground when you were a child. And what about the games you played the most and the toys you liked? Try to think about it for a second. Can you remember your neighborhood where you lived? The buildings around you? What about your favorite food you had on your table when you were a child? And did you run down the street to meet with your friends to play a bit? Now, picture this scene. You're running down the street to meet with your friends. But suddenly you hear loud explosions. Then you see fire. Then you hear screams. Your friends keep running away from you and you have to follow them. You are out of breath. You feel scared and you feel sadness. But you have to keep running. You can come back, you can open your eyes. All right. That was the picture of my childhood. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alan, and I'm here to be the voice of Bosnia and Herzegovina in this house of democracy, but as an individual, together with, I assume, Spaniards. Do we have some Spaniards in the house? Yes. What about Germans? French? I wonder, do we have some Bosnians in the house? Yes, there you go. It's two of us, three of us. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. I was born in 1989 in central Bosnia. I was raised in central Bosnia. Bosnia is a beautiful country with green hills and big mountains, with big Balkan houses with red roofs. All my ancestors lived there for centuries. But in 1992, all of it changed. Like millions of people in the Balkans during the early 90s, I spent my entire childhood running from one refugee shelter to another. I still remember my mom very clearly having me and my sister on her shoulders running down the hill I mentioned before. 30 minutes later, we saw our house being burned to the ground. That is how much time we had to run for our lives. Over the next three and a half years, I would see destroyed towns and villages, destroyed houses, destroyed mosques and churches, destroyed cemeteries across the country. As I'm speaking about this, I just remember that we as kids, we used to play in these destroyed houses. We would get inside and we would see family albums laying down on the floor in these empty houses. Our own world became our playground. And remember once again, what kind of playground did you have as a child? The country called Yugoslavia disappeared in flames and six new countries aiming to become democracies were born. Also, as a kid, I was wondering why my father was not home and why he was returning home only once in a while, like every few weeks. Can you remember how often you were seeing your father as a child? Suddenly, my homeland, Bosnia and Herzegovina, became the land of the vision. We started to talk about our part of town and their part of town, our part of village and their part of village. A neighbor started to fight against its first neighbor. The whole country was turned into a blood bet. And that was my childhood. But what kind of decisions can you make as a child in an ethnic war? 
And can you make any decisions? Do you have any right to make any decisions about you and about your identity in an ethnic world? I had a problem. I did not belong to us nor to them. I was the result of what we call an ethnically mixed marriage. In an ethnic world, being mixed is a sin because you don't belong to us or to them. I spent my whole childhood listening to the questions like, but is your name our name or their name? Do you belong to us or to them? I was being asked such questions from my doctors, teachers, professors, classmates, my old childhood. To be completely honest with you, it was a profoundly traumatic experience for a small boy of five. But at the same time, it helped me to understand that this was not the reality I wanted to accept. This was not normal. As the war was approaching its most aggressive phase in 1995, a new political system, a new constitution and peace deal proclaimed as democracy was unfolding in front of our eyes. Of course, it was brokered by the USA and Western Europe. So what was the price we had to pay for peace? 100,000 Bosnians lost their lives during the war. Every fourth Bosnian left the country for good. So turn around, we are a full house now. Imagine every fourth person is missing. And once you leave this building to grab a beer and fries in Brussels city center, which I will do of course later, imagine that every fourth person in Brussels city center is gone for good. That is the Bosnia today, and that is the price we had to pay for peace. But let's think a bit more about how constitutional changes and deals and legislation affect your daily life. Suddenly we were turned into ethnic boxes. We didn't talk about a unified society. We started to talk about ethnicities and boxes where you live. If you are of a wrong ethnicity or on the wrong side of the country, you cannot run for presidency even today. You cannot get elected and you cannot vote. Another price for peace. And there is another thing called two schools under one roof. It's a very nice wording for discrimination and you know what I'm talking about here by now. Basically one floor is for one ethnicity and another one is for another ethnicity. I spent my whole education in such schools. But at the same time, I'm thankful I spent my time there because I realized once again, this is not the reality I need for myself and for my country because that was not normal. That was not the idea I wanted for anyone in my country. At that point, I started to become interested in the world of politics. At that point, I decided to study political science because I thought I will be the change maker in my society. I will be the one to unite Bosnians once again. I started to travel for the first time and I discovered Erasmus Plus. Who is here from Erasmus Plus? Yes, it literally changed my life completely. For the first time I left my country and I met with some officials here in Brussels. I learned the words like policy, policy dialogue, political agenda, youth activism and so on. Here in Brussels, I met these officials and they came to me and told me, well, Bosnia and the Balkans, that is Europe's backyard. He was trying to be sweet, by the way. But a backyard? I am a backyard. No, honey, I'm not a backyard. We are partners, we are neighbors. And that's the thing I wanted for my country. But at the same time, I had a chance to travel. And then this sense of isolation of my country and youngsters from my country was so strong everywhere I went. I was often the only boss in the house. I'm glad there are a few of us here. And at that point, I was also thankful for that fact because I learned I don't want to accept this. I want to dream about unified and inclusive Europe, including non-EU and EU member states. So I became active locally in my country. I joined local election committees to oversee elections because elections 
that is the highest thing and value you can get from democracy, right? That's what they teach us at university, to respect the rules and to respect democracy. So I went there. What I saw over the next few years was completely depressing. Rigged votes, fake votes, dead people voting and dead people deciding the outcome of our elections. Another prize for peace. I was an independent member of this committee with all these ethnically run parties. And it, it was funny to see them, how they cooperated so well on the ground to kill this little democracy we had, while the leaders, ethnic leaders, were fighting on TV, calling for new wars, new conflicts, and new divisions within the country. By being a member of this local committee, I had a feeling I was killing this little democracy with my own hands. At that point, I started to question this idea that I'm some sort of change maker in my society. So I left this idea of being politically involved at all. So I decided to do youth work because youth work in my imagination had nothing to do with politics. Well, in 2015, we established a small office in my small town surrounded by post-war villages where these new Bosnians born after the war were living with no memory of the war, but they were surrounded by the legacy of the war everywhere they went. We established this office. There was only one person working there, me. We had no youth to work with. We had no money, no projects, no connections with European partners, nothing. We started from the scratch. I was thinking for days and days how to make democracy fun and exciting to these new Bosnians. I would invite them just to do like these small scale projects in our local community to show our local community we exist in first place. I started to write emails and letters to known and unknown people across Europe, again to show them that we exist and that we are not a backyard. We are your partners, not a backyard. From zero, I suddenly had 30 youngsters join me in this tiny project. I still call it tiny because that's a sweet word. From 30, I had 50. From 50, I had 150. From 150, I had 200 youngsters work with me. Don't forget, it took me seven years to reach this. If you want to give up a tip, don't give up. The first year was gone and we got our first European project. Another year and our first regional project. In 2019, we started with a pilot project to help young Bosnians to get involved in political process in the country, to show them how the system works for and against them, to show them the real cases of bribes and rigged votes so they know once they vote that that was not okay. We show them how actually they can get involved and control the process. I was shocked when I started to receive their messages. They started to send me messages and pictures from them voting and becoming members of local election committees. They were proud to be now the members of these local committees to control, to oversee the whole process. They started to send me messages to ask me how to establish the local NGO or youth association to fight for funds for local community and for the youth in the local community. Then they started to send me messages to ask me how to write a letter to uh, an ignorant municipal mayor who didn't want to support the youth-related projects in their local community. These are the new Bosnians, and I feel I somehow created it. So, ladies and gentlemen, what is the message of my story? Firstly, think about your own traumas and problems and how you can transform these traumas into something good, a common good for your local community. This is what happens when you bring the youth around the table. When you bring us around the table, you create magic. Let's not forget the idea of the EU. The idea did not come from happiness. It came from destruction and blood, and that's why we are here. Look how far we have come because of destruction and traumas, our collective traumas. Finally, 
What would you do if you see your neighbor's house in flames? Remember the childhood story. Remember the houses around you. What would you do if you see your first neighbor's house in flames? Would you jump in and help or you will just stay and observe? Think about Europe when you think about your neighborhood. Think about Europe right now. What is happening right now? And what is the role we have as a community? Think about European EU member states and non-EU member states. What can we do together for a unified and inclusive Europe versus the Europe that somebody is trying to propose? My own system was proposing hatred and prejudices. I refuse to accept that. And because I refuse to accept that, we came far. Think about Europe again when you think about your neighbors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.